that time of year, first time for me where Woody's now not flying. So I'm just doing this little video now to show you the news and the way Woody calls. I don't mind him calling, it doesn't bother me at all. But I'm going to attempt just to quieten that down. I did have a feed tube in the news and I'm going to put another one in there. So I may put food into the news. But at the moment, I'm going in, getting him out, hooding him, putting him on a perch, feeding him. I'm staying out here all the time whilst he's eating. Um, because of the avian bird flu, I'm not leaving him out here. I'm putting him back in when I'm not here. But for his well-being, I'm bringing him out for cleaning the news and feeding him. So I've hooded him, put him on the perch, put food down, remove the hood so he hasn't seen me feeding him. And I put food underneath a piece of um, artificial grass and pull that away. So that reveals the food to him and he's not actually seen me giving it to him. I think he, he probably knows what's going on really and it's me just being a bit naive. But I'm trying these things because that's all I've got to do is try things and enjoy it. So I'm going to get him out now. I'm going to weigh him and then I'm going to put him on this perch and then reveal the food. And today he's got squirrel and that's a roadkill squirrel. He hasn't caught the squirrel so I've tried to keep him off him. He's, he's had a go at them but he hasn't actually caught any. I don't want him going for squirrels because they do bite rather nastily. As I say he has gone for them a few times and that's what they do. You can't stop everything. So today he's got a nice bit of road kill. So what I'm going to do today is get him out and I'm going to try and put him just for the sake of hooding him to keep that going. I'm trying to keep him manned. I could just leave him in there and uh, not, not actually man him anymore, just keep feeding him the tune. But my muse I don't think is big enough. I'm going to say 8 by 6 shed. My four shed turned into a muse, and I'm gonna, gonna put some webbing on the front, a small bit there. But because I fly him every day without fail, I think I've missed three flights since September. Well, well as soon as I started flying him free, every day I've missed three days. I'm fortunate to do that. It doesn't mean if you can't do it, it's a problem, but I'm, I'm fortunate to do it, and that's why. I'm not worried about the size of the muse. If I wasn't doing that and just flying in weekends, I'd probably have a lot, lot bigger area so he can exercise. But I'm going to change it. So I'm trying all these things because I'm new at it. It's just my ideas, and I'm going to see if I can just calm that calling down. He's not, he's not bad as you can see, but when I come out in the mornings, he does call, which. As I say, I don't mind, but what have I got left now? But to feed him and just do things that sort of is nice. So I'm going to just try this to see if I can achieve this calling to be a little bit quieter. Anyway, I'll go and get him. Okay, so here he is. I've got him out. He's fairly quiet. Normally he's quiet on my fist. And he's normally quiet when we're out. Now, he used the hood really well earlier on in the season. I was putting him in the mute and then bringing him out and then removing the hood but slowly but surely he started pulling out, pulling away, dodging the hood and then he would even drop back off my fist. So this is probably what he's going to do now. So then I started putting him after I'd been out, after he'd fed and he was hooding a little easier. So I tried to maintain this hooding technique for myself and for him. I'll carry a, not this hood, but another hood with me all the time, so if there's ever a problem when we're out and he's freaking out for some reason, I can hood him and calm him down. Or if I need to do anything on him, or just keep him calm for any reason, I know he can take the hood. I'm gonna attempt to hood him on camera, which, you'll see all the problems I have rather than just so I can do it. It's not always easy and this hood's not the it's not the best one. 
but you'll see, you'll see what he does. He knows what I'm going to do. So he's starting to turn now. And then he drops back. So that wasn't too bad, it's, it's been worse than that, but I suppose I'm getting better at it as well. He still tends to dodge and weave and drop back off the fist. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave it on just for a minute just to keep this going through this non-season, just so, so when I'm back into uh, the hunting season it's not going to be so hard and I'm sure he's going to get better. What I had been doing before is now putting a little bit of food in my glove, removing the hood so he could see the food, trying to make him realise that the hood is always a reward at the end of it. So there's no food here now but when I take this hood off you might see him start looking down for the food. just looking around now I, th I think what he's doing he might be looking at what I've set up over there because he's one step ahead and he knows there's food under that little mat I'm just going to quickly weigh him because I'm curious to see what his weight's going up at so I'm probably not bringing him in for this down there already because I think he knows more than I think he knows. grass out of the way and he'll be straight down there on that. This may not make any difference to recording me but it's just what I'm trying. As I say I've got nothing else to do with him. So I might as well try these things. Inside the muse, he's got this top perch, so it's high up off the ground for where he sleeps with proper astroturf on there just to help with bumble foot. So he's got some Air, air under his pad. I've got that now on all the perches around here and outside. I started off using artificial um, glass which was like this one. This stuff here which I didn't know at the time wasn't really up to it. It wasn't the proper stuff to stop bumblefoot or help with bumblefoot. That I use now just for the sides so I can wash that. Around the back of the muse, behind his perches, I've got these sheets of artificial grass so I can unclip these and then take these out outside for hosing off. They seem to work well so I don't actually come in here and do any hosing down, I'll just take everything out and it's going to be done now, or in a minute when we do that. So we've got this perch here which is just a piece of hazel and I've got this artificial grass every so often so he's got a bit of bare wood, a bit of bark, a bit of astroturf so he's got a variation there for his feet. He seems to like actually perching on this astroturf which is the proper stuff.
today is sort of um, a little bit sunny, so I'm going to take advantage of it. We're not out flying. Uh, I normally try and clean this once a week. I take all these uh, mats out and hose them off and dry them, but where it's been so wet, I have not had a chance. But it's generally quite clean here. And once I've cleaned all these off and they're dry, then I get F10. F10 uh, veterinary disinfectant, and then I'll come in and spray everything all the top, sides, and bottom. So, this was also something I made there, so it can slot up into that open space there during really cold weather. That's how I had it when it was below freezing or any heavy winds. Sometimes if the weather's bad and I don't actually want to take them out for two to three hours like I normally do, I just open this day up and have got an alleyway that runs up into these woods up here. And I'm just walking up from there and fly in for maybe an hour, half an hour to an hour just to feed him, give him some exercise. Often do is break bits of bone up for him. You see me do this a lot. It's pretty full now, I think. But he knows what I'm doing. now if we were flying he would eat every single bit but his crops nice and full he's just picking around now I'm not going to take that until he's out the way so I don't want him to think I'm actually taking his food but there's nothing there but a bit of skin a little bit of bone which I'm sure if I cut that piece up, he would eat it. Come on. I will remove these flying jesses off there. I do oil them or grease them, but I'm going to take them off. No point in them being on there now. I'm going to also before I fly next season, remove this anklet. Sometimes his back talon gets caught in that loop. So I'm finding that too long, this idea. So he's gonna have a, a lot shorter anklet. So that's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. 